Alright everybody, so uh, welcome to our channel. We have an interesting story to tell you guys today. Yeah, we're uh, currently on our way to see Tanner's sister and the kids, so I um, thought this would be the perfect time to just unravel this day of doom. <laughs> Guess it was just a night, mostly. So, uh, it all starts uh, the other day before we went to go see uh, Taylor and the kids and we're standing in the kitchen and we hear something scurrying well it started off Tanner was in the bathroom and I heard it and he's I was like Tanner come here and then he heard he heard it too and we're like well maybe it's just out in the gutter and then we were like yeah hey, didn't think much of it we finished getting ready so then after we finished getting ready I'm pouring my coffee and then we hear it again and Liz said, turns to me and says, that's not in the gutter. And I said, yeah. And right about that time, whatever, I mean, we know what it was. We but, know what it was, but we don't want to ruin the story. So, um, whatever it was, it accidentally kicked the can light, which shook it, and then uh, made dust drop to the ground. So, and I'm like, that's something big. So, at this point, we don't know what to do. We grab a five-gallon bucket. This is where it gets funny. And I pull the can light down. And I hold the bucket over the hole. And then I'm going around the edge of the soffit. Beating it with the broom. To try and scare whatever it is. Because see, what we assume it is, is we assume that it's like a squirrel or a raccoon that got in. Because we do have an opening Which in the roof. We thought it was a raccoon, we thought it was a squirrel, we weren't really sure. We had an opening in the roof where a raccoon had previously, I think it was a raccoon, it's had probably, previously pulled away the guard that whoever had put on, put on. And so, we got that fixed, but we couldn't get it scared out. So we're like, alright, we'll put the can back in, we left. Fast forward to about, eh, nine hours when we came back home. About 10 hours. 9, so, 10, whatever. So I go to do something at the sink. I don't remember what I was doing. I think you were putting your dishes in the sink. Something like that. And I noticed that some things have been knocked out of the windowsill over the sink. And I wasn't really sure what happened. Uh, I just saw that her dolphin succulent and a picture had fallen out of the windowsill. And at first I thought that maybe the wind did it. You know, maybe the wind blew it over while we were gone, but the window was closed. And then at that point it clicked in my head and I turned, the can light was popped out and it was hanging by the wire. And at that point I knew that we had a critter in the house. Which at this point, we thought whatever it was, maybe just, I don't know, we didn't know. But I was like, I don't see anything. So I went to go to the bathroom, but I left the door open because we were talking. And all of a sudden, Bailey's going just nuts. I can hear him. Tanner went into the other room to do something, and Bailey's out in the living room. And I can just hear him. And he's getting this low. He only does it when he's scared. And he gets real low, and he goes, woof. And I was like, uh, Tanner? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. And I go, you need to go see what the dogs found. So, uh... And I knew from, I called it from the beginning that it was a bird. And she told me, no, there's no way. It's well, because to it be was bird. running so quickly that it didn't sound like a bird. It sounded like a squirrel or something. And what we figured happened was it fell down into the soffit from the attic. Because the attic access is by the bathroom window. We figured it went across the attic and fell into the soffit and just couldn't get out. Because I thought a bird was more intelligent than that. <laughs> no. Clearly I was wrong. So, um, and at this point, Bailey is staring at the corner. So I know exactly where it is. And so I start carefully moving things just to see what was going on. Which I told him, hey, let's get all the doors shut. But he didn't hear me because obviously he knew it was a bird. So he didn't hear me. And I got most of the doors shut except for the bedroom door. That's where things went wrong. So the bird decides that it's had enough and it's flying away it flies all through the house trying to find an escape and it finally ends up in the bedroom 
which right as he's pulling away the blanket from where it's hiding, I am walking into the kitchen to set something down before I went back to close the bedroom door. And as he does it, it flies up, flies right from my face, so I had no choice but to last minute duck, and this dumb bird poops on me. <laughs> so then the bird flies into the bedroom. This oh, Lord, it's funny. And so at this point, Liz grabs a bat. You're forgetting the part where I called your mom and sister, because I know they've had experience with birds or bats getting in the house. Well, bats are different. So I said, how do we get this out of the house? And they're like, I don't know. So then they got to watch this unfold. As I grab a baseball bat, and I'm like, all right, let's go. So then for the next, I don't know, hour and a half? No, it wasn't that long. It just felt like an hour and a half because we couldn't get the dang thing caught. It was at least an hour. We chased this bird around our little bitty bedroom. With a five-gallon bucket and a baseball bat. I'm surprised Tanner didn't get knocked out. So at which point I determined that a five-gallon bucket isn't going to work because I tried to swat at it with the um, tote lid that I had that I was going to put over the bucket so that it couldn't get out. I, I accidentally broke the lid, so then I determined the bucket would be useless because then I could fly out of the bucket. So that I take the bat from her, she grabs a mop handle. And it had a little flappy thing on it. And we open the bedroom window, and we're like, we just got to get it to the window. That's all we got to do. So here this thing is. We have two TVs in our bedroom. One's a smaller one that Tanner uses for gaming, and then we watch the mounted one we watch TV on. So it's flying up on there and behind us. So obviously, you can't just swing at that. And there's a giant mirror in our room. You can't just swing. You got to be a little bit more methodical. So we're trying to get it, you know, away from certain things. And right as I'm going to close the closet door so it doesn't go in the closet, Tanner pokes it and it flies into the closet. So I'm like, are you kidding me? Now we have to wash everything in this closet because birds carry diseases and fleas and they're just gross. And I have all my hand wash only LuLaRoe in there. So then the this dumb bird is up on the very top shelf. And so Tanner's poking at it. Well, we finally get it off there after about 20 minutes. And then it's flying in all my clothes, all the blankets on the ground. Because we have our good quilts in there too. And we're like, oh my God. Well, where did it finally end up? And then it kept going on the curtains. It would sit on top of the curtains to go out the window, but it wouldn't go out the window. And then finally, I think... Oh, I know how I got it out. So this is... So it got over to Bailey's kennel. And I had it in my sights. I was going to swing and I was going to get this stupid freaking bird out of my life. Well, this stupid little thing drops into Bailey's kennel. And I was like, come on, I just cleaned all his stuff. Now I gotta sanitize all his toys. I gotta clean his bed. I was annoyed. So then, I'm like, Tanner, just bring me the bucket. I can catch it in the bucket and we'll figure it out from there. And <clears throat> then that's where Tanner comes back in. So then. The bird's in the kennel. And at this point, I wasn't going to reach in there for it because I knew it would probably attack me or something or at least fly away. So... Why'd you kick the kennel door then? That didn't do Hold anything. on. So then I just kicked the kennel because I knew it would get it out. I kicked the kennel and the dogs have kennel bowls uh, that we give water so they can have water at night. And it splashed the kennel bowl all over the place. The bird went flying to the other end of the kennel. So I kicked the kennel again. The bird flew out of the kennel, out the window, and out of our lives. Not really out of our lives, though, yeah. because we then had to take everything out of the closet and take it down to the basement and wash it. And so now we have a mountain of laundry that we've been working on for the last day and a half that is literally as tall as I am. Mm -hmm. Our laundry was stacked up to the ceiling. And then we had to go take the couch pillows off, sanitize the couch, the pillows have to be washed. All the dog beds had to be washed. The dog's leashes had to be washed because they were sitting on the table and it pooped on them. 
We had to go sanitize the entire house. It was not a fun night. I think we went to bed at like, what, 2 a.m.? Yeah, about. So, um, so yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed this little funny story of ours. We look back on it now and laugh and uh, picture how ridiculous we probably looked walking around our, or going around our bedroom screaming as the bird flew at us and swinging. Like I said. She was screaming, not me. Yeah. Like I said, it's a surprise to me that Tanner did not get knocked out with a baseball bat. <laughs> it would have been amusing to me, but that's Cause... the story of how our bird ruined her day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Check out Facebook, The Herc Life, YouTube, The Herc Life, or Instagram, Herc Life 2019. Thanks.